It's your favorite Dr. Honey, Dr. Faith Abraham, and welcome back to our channel. Um, I just want to, usually our videos are, especially since I've been standing doing the videos, they're very energetic, they're fast paced, which I love, and um, you guys have said that you like it, the change as well, so thank you for noticing. Uh, but I do want to slow this down just a little bit so that I can really go into the story and um, share with you guys how I uh, manifested my first $3,000 client. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, I don't really get into uh, manifestation, law of attraction, um, all, and all of that. I really uh, focus on just staying in our divinity as God created us in his image and likeness. And so a lot of the stuff that people call manifestation and um, law of attraction and stuff like that, you know, those are uh, real things because that's universal principles and laws that are set up in the earth. Uh, however, I don't even get into that. The way I have literally taken my life from where it was to where it is now, and I'll get a little bit into that a little bit later, but has been through just tapping into um, our divinity and our supernatural power given to us by God. You know, when I was reading the scriptures, I was just like, oh, okay, let me just apply what I'm reading. You know, when Jesus said, uh, if you speak to the mountain and you tell the mountain, be moved and be cast into the sea, if you don't doubt in your heart and you believe what you say, you will have exactly what you say. So to me, I was like, bet. <laughs> Like, I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to do exactly that. Now, um, it was kind of like figurative language that he was talking about. You know, like, you're not just going to walk up to a mountain and tell the mountain to move. However, there is um, supernatural ability in which, you know, things can shift in your life where when you have a mountain in your life and you see that mountain for what it is, you acknowledge and you're like, okay, this thing got has got to move. Like, you got to go. Get gone. Right? saying this out get gone <laughs> you speak to that mountain and you tell it to move it's going to move some way somehow in the t divine timing how everything is supposed to work for you it's going to move and that's what I was doing so um, when I like I first got my start in entrepreneurship through MLM I was working for a company I was in my last year of college, and in that last year, I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going to show you how to apply uh, this so that you can start getting some high-ticket coaching and just filling up your business from zero or nothing to book busy and blessed, okay? So I started an MLM. I was in my like last year of school, and the real reason why I did that was because even though I had studied psychology and I love psychology, I just wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. I kept saying, I'm going to be the next Dr. Phil. I'm going to be the next Dr. Phil. That's what I told my dad. And he was like, okay, girl. He's a night job man. So he was like, <laughs> make you know talk your nonsense. Right? So I'm like, I'm going to be the next Dr. Phil. Don't worry about it. So I loved it, but I just didn't have like a job or something in particular that I was going into specifically. So I got into um, network marketing and me and my team, y'all, we were cashing $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 checks in college. So please believe we were going out, you know, eating everywhere, you know, just dressing how we wanted to dress, paid off comfort, credit cards, whatever. And then, you know, it was just living it up. And because we thought the money was going to keep coming in, and it didn't. So by the time I graduated, I was still with the company, but I was making significantly less <laughs> than I was before. And it got rough. Like, I remember just telling my car, like, look, you cannot round out on me. You gas. You have to last. You have to last. You know, and having, you know, someone to just bless me or give me five bucks or whatever and I'm like okay I'm gonna put gas in my car you know and I would get my $50 checks from my company and I was you know a new believer at the time but I did not miss that five dollar tides honey you couldn't tell me nothing okay that was the biggest tides <laughs> to me because I could do so much with that five dollars I was eating ramen noodles and hot dogs as a gourmet dinner I had an apartment I was walking into no furniture twin mattress set no frame I had my 
radio with my Kirk Franklin and CC Wine and CD that I took from my mama. No lies. And had a closet full of clothes. So you could tell, you know, the mindset was, was definitely off and my life was reflecting it. And so fast forward, I got married and that should have been my ticket out, right? No, he was just as broke as I was, but he was a man on a mission and I love my husband for that. He had a dream for us and he was like, babe, I'm gonna make you a millionaire. I'm gonna retire you, like you won't even have to work. I'm an ambitious woman. So I was like, cool, I'm still gonna work. <laughs> so um, we you know, were just doing different businesses and stuff like that. We opened our university when we uh, relocated to Atlanta. We didn't have anything. But we just knew, we loved education. We just felt a real heavy unction to do, and we did. Um, my husband was like, I feel like God was telling us to go here, go there. And we started meeting the right people. Like, it was just so, we were just listening. We were just listening to the Holy Spirit within. We were just listening like, okay, this is our next move. This is our, you know, everything wasn't perfect, but we were just following the leading of the Spirit. So that didn't take us out of debt, though. That took a long time to really just build up. To where it is now then um, I was working I couldn't find work at first so you know I finally got a job but then that ended and I'm like man I just keep going up and down up and down if you know what I'm talking about let me know in the comments because I can't be the only one where you just keep going up and down up and you're like okay wait you're supposed to go up and stay up it's up it is up it is up and it's stuck like that's how I felt like my life should have been and it, it, it it just wasn't. So, um, university, got the job, but didn't get any, was putting out resumes. Like, I was customizing the covers. I was specifying. I was finding people. Like, I was doing all the things. I couldn't even get an interview. I couldn't even get an interview. And one day, my husband was like, babe, you have a PhD in something that you love. If they don't want to, they don't want to hire you, hire yourself. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And that's when it started. That's when I, you know, I got certified, um, and I was operating as a, as a certified Christian counselor. And I didn't want to go through the state, um, even though I had my doctorate at the time already. I didn't want to go through the state because I felt like they weren't going to allow me to really be free and move the way I wanted to move in my business. You know, as a certified Christian counselor, I was also doing coaching. Okay, I was also doing coaching and. That was great, but that's not how I was positioning myself in the market. It was certified Christian counselor, certified counselor. And I was having people pay out of pocket. They still pay out of pocket, okay? I didn't need insurance. I didn't need to go through the state. You know, we just did what we did. We did it well. I was getting um, transformation for my clients. It was awesome, but I got worn out, y'all. Now hear me and hear me well. If you are a coach, if you are a counselor, and you're doing one-on-one -on -one sessions, good for you. But there's going to come a point in your business where you need to shift and take that experience that you've acquired from the one-on-ones and shift your business. I talk a lot about this in my VIP day. The link is in the description box. I'm not going to go into all of that. But you got to know when you got to shift. And this was my shift. That's what I was doing. Even though I was counseling people, it's a business. So we were bringing in, you know, we were doing good money. We were making it happen. And I just said, I'm tired. I can't, I, I mean, I can't counsel but so many people in a day. I only have so much time. I only have so much energy. Then I got to clock out, right? And go invest that time and energy into my husband, into my three kids, into ministry, you know? And I was like, I... I know I can have high tech. I have so much value. So listen to how, this is like how I was talking to myself and just building myself up for this moment. I have so much value to offer the world. I know that all they have to do is just sit with me. They, I don't even care if they have a payment plan. They just gotta sit with me. I'm gonna show them exactly what to do. If they're willing to run, baby, we can make this thing happen in 90 days. I could, we could get results. For, I'll get them results. We'll make it happen. We'll do this. We'll do that. I'll show them exactly what I didn't know. Work. They're gonna be able to make it good for themselves, and I'm gonna be able to have my first high ticket, you know, a client. And you know, this is just how I'm talking to myself, and this is how I'm hyping myself up, and how I'm building myself up, and I'm just 
building myself. Like, God didn't leave me deficient. He gave me gifts. He gave me talents. He gave me insight. Like, I'm smart. I have the spirit of wisdom. I have the spirit of counsel. There ain't nobody that comes into my territory that's not blessed because of me. That's how, that's how God made me. That's how I, he wired me. That's how I'm set. Like, this is how I'm talking to myself. So we have our university commencement ceremony. And my husband did not tell me that I was supposed to speak. I get up there and I rip it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm speaking. I'm blowing and going. I don't even know what happened. That like it was just like whoa, 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 whoa. Like, you know, I'm just going right. And I did something so unfathomable. I started bragging about myself. <laughs> now, for many of us, especially us ladies, we're told don't brag. Uh, especially my faith people, uh, be humble, guys. Bragging and telling people what you've been able to accomplish are two totally different things. Let's be clear. Let's be crystal clear. That day, I was telling the people what I've been able to accomplish, what I've been able to do, the results, the transformation, how God has lifted me up from not being able to pay $440 for rent to being able to live in one of the most prestigious zip codes in Georgia, okay? Atlanta specifically, to be in the burbs, have a beautiful home, seven bedroom with a movie theater. You know what I'm saying? Like I couldn't even afford $440. There was a time when me and my husband only had one car. There's times we couldn't even put gas to the F line. You understand? Where I had to speak to my car so that it wouldn't run out of gas before I got home. There were times when I would be driving my car and I knew, I knew I drew, drew, drove over a nail. And I just was like, no, tired. I speak to you right now. Now people call me crazy. People say, oh, that, you don't take all that. I don't know what you went through in your life. I know what I've been through in mine. And I would speak to the tire and I was like, do not deflate. You will stay air, you will be full of air. You will stay up until I can get you changed. And y'all, I remember one time in, in particular, I had parked the car and I went in and I said, you will stay filled. I'm gonna have the money and I'm gonna change you, but you will stay filled. I didn't even wanna, I, my mind was going crazy. I parked the car, I went in the house, you know, went to sleep because we didn't have the money to change the tire let alone just get the little you know do the fix a flat thing i got up in the morning because that was the first thing i was going to do before i stepped out and the tire was still inflated i went to the tire place and the guy was like when did this happen i was like it happened yesterday and it's not flat hmm because the angle should, like he was telling me all the reasons why the tire should be flat I seen too much. I seen too much. So after that, um, back to the event. After the event, I was just telling my testimony. The next day, I got a phone call and my client paid me $3,000. She paid me $3,000 at one time. <laughs> I was freaking out. And I was like, listen, I do have a payment plan available. She had already paid the money. She put it on her card and everything. She was done. And I'm sitting here trying to get her to reverse it or, you know, let me give her half of it back or something so that she doesn't. She was like, no, I know what I need to do. And I know this is what I have to do to get going. She told me her goals. And I was like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> now, if I told that story to somebody that's like, oh my God, you manifested that. Yes, that's not an argument. What I say is I use my divine supernatural powers vested in me by God to create what I knew was my portion, what I knew was and should be afforded to me. And that's what it was. That's what happened. And I just want to share this story with you just to let you know that it doesn't matter where you're at right now. It doesn't matter like where you're coming from, what you've been through, you don't have to sit there and just go through life, you know, 
Oh, I hope, I wish, and I'm a, I was a wisher. I watched a lot of Disney growing up, and I used to just wish on a star, wish to the moon. Oh, I wish that was me. Oh, I wish it would happen for me. I wish this was this. And I had to, I remember God telling me, stop wishing and start speaking. Start speaking. I hated speaking because I was always told I talked too much. So it was like a lot of stuff was set up and was happening, you know, in my past that wired me to function a certain way as an adult, but it was against <laughs> how God had wired me and set me up to be as an adult and to live on this earth the way he wanted me to live. So stop living life in this less than powerful way. Stop feeling like where you came from, there's no redemption. Stop looking at your circumstances like that's the end. This just that is just a stepping stool. If I can get up, you can. Even with all of that, I still am here. PhD, married at 23, had my first kid at 25. Doctor said I should only have one because whenever I get pregnant, I get sick and unto death. I have three very healthy kids. My child, they said, oh, don't expect too much from him. He, he, he may not be verbal. He may not be able to say anything. Not only does my son talk, but he plays the trombone. He plays the drums. He has a YouTube channel. Like, you can't tell me what God can't do. But I also know that you have to be intentional. And I want you to be intentional. And I'm sharing this with you to just let you know that all things are possible. Don't sit here and think anything less than who you are. Get comfortable standing in your power, your dominion, your authority. Get comfortable listening to yourself speak and talk and do the things that God has called you to do. The reason why you're living subpar is because you're acting subpar. Stop it. Stop it. Be you. Be you 100%. Create the life. Manifest the life that you know since you were a little girl, since you were a little boy, you were supposed to have. The reason why you had those dreams and you saw that at such a young age was to set the stage, to set the tone for you. But you have to do it. God's not going to do it. He's already done his part and he will do his part when you play your part. You got to cooperate. Cooperate with God and you will go far. That's how I, you know, got my first high ticket coaching client and... I've been doing that ever since. I love what I do. I love impacting people. And I love um, making income in that impact. And I just love seeing people transformed, including myself. You know, I came from humble beginnings. And I'm grateful for where I am right now. But I'm not done. I just, I'm just getting started. So you have to feel that way about yourself. Let's get it. If I can do it, you can do it. And it's really just a mental game, a speaking game, and a believing game. You can have anything. You can do anything that you want. If you, I try to put a card right here. Um, if you say it, it'll be done. My husband and I, we just came back from the Bahamas. It was awesome. And yes, I'm talking about it again. If you've seen my other videos, you know I talked about it before. Because <laughs> it was just amazing. And it just came out of nowhere. And I was like... Here you go again, here you go again, God, yes! And it's just a testament to the power of God, but also a testament to the power of you being intentional, you showing up, you being comfortable in your power, your dominion, your authority to live life on your terms. Do it, do it, do it. You won't regret it. I love you. You're still here. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, and I will definitely see you in the next video.